Hey everyone, welcome to Think Woodworks. My name is Izzy Swan, or if you're my wife, crazy redneck in a messy garage making it worse. <laughs> Whichever way you want to go. Today I want to talk about homemade bar clamps. I did a video four or five months ago on uh, making your homemade bar clamps, and it's an elegant solution for homemade bar clamps, but the, one, those, the ones that I designed were, I wouldn't call it tricky to build, but a little bit more complicated. So today I wanted to show you about the simplest design possible for a bar clamp that requires no store-bought hardware with the exception of a couple of screws. So let's get started. All right, to start with, let me show you the clamps uh, themselves. This is it, nothing fancy. The headstock consists of two pieces of plywood that are three or five inches tall by two inches wide. They sandwich over a bar that is an inch and a quarter by two uh, wide by two inches tall. And these particular ones are 32 inches long. You can make them as long as you need it. Um, and they're just sandwiched over the bar. And on top here, I have an inch and a quarter by one and a quarter inch piece. And I've cut a slight bevel on the front on the headstock here. And I'll show you why in a second. The tail just consists of two pieces of plywood that are three inches by five inches and I have a piece that's just slightly over an inch and a quarter so it slides up and down the, the bar nicely uh, so it's an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter top and bottom and the bottom section is set at a slight bevel and I'll show you why right now the, slide the tail over the bar get your uh, the piece you want to clamp or pieces as it were and on the bottom here I've got this piece set at an angle so it accommodates the angle of a wedge that I have cut. That slides in there. So just tap it in place and I've left some, a little bit of space here at the front and you know anything over an eighth inch is fine, eighth and eighth, eighth and a quarter. And the reason I set that bevel on the front is so when I put this um, wedge in it sits flat up against the piece. If I didn't have that it would actually create a slope and then it would create pressure and as I banged it, as I knocked that in, it would want to push the, the piece that I'm clamping or the pieces that I'm clamping in the opposite direction. So by adding that little bevel, which is the same bevel that's on the wedge, you alleviate most of that. So that simply goes in there and then just knock that wedge in. And there is really quite a bit of clamping force holding this together. And, uh, you know, these can be basically made for free. Everything you see here came out of the dumpster from the construction site down the road. I do have a few screws in here. Uh, you don't have to put them in. Uh, you could just use glue. I put these in because I threw these together in the last 20 minutes and I didn't want to wait, you know, till tomorrow morning before I could start, you know, putting pressure on them. So let's take this apart real quick. To release your headstock, you simply take a hammer and just uh, right below the wedge. And now you're ready to reset it and use it again. This is a real simple, simple build. You could do a whole bunch of these in a very short period of time. And they do create, create, create. <laughs> they do create enough pressure to do really get some, a good hold down. And if you're going to, you know, as long as you have your material milled properly for glue ups and tops and panels and such and that sort of thing, it's more than adequate as far as the pressure that you need to hold everything together while it dries. I started by cutting out this piece again, one and a quarter wide, two inches tall, 32 inches long. And then I made two sandwiches like this. I made one with uh, three inches wide by five inches tall with an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter piece on the top. And I have a second piece cut that's three inches that I'll use on the bottom. And again, the same on the front. This is just two inches by five inches with an inch and a quarter piece by inch and a quarter that accommodates the same thickness. And once I have these all screwed together, what I do is I put this piece on and I'm going to slide my inch and a quarter piece on here and whenever I'm going to put the wedge in I want to put the wedge in from the back so I'm actually going to put the wedge install the wedge prior to the glue up here or to putting it together that way I know that that is the right angle and then I'm just going to take my drill and I'll drill a couple of pilot holes and then run some screws in there and that'll hold it in place Okay, so after you put that piece together, um, you're going to see that block is on a bit of an angle and I've got a little bit sticking out here and here. Now you can either trim that up with your bandsaw or table saw or chop box or whatever. 
but um, I trim it up so it'll sit nice and flat along with the back piece. All right, the next thing I want to do is take my pre-cut wedge and mark that out on my uh, headstock, and I'm just going to do that by putting a just a flat piece of plywood in or some kind of flat edge there and holding that wedge in place and bringing my tip to the one side because I don't want to cut out a whole bunch of material and just marking it out. And in this case I'm just going to use my hand saw to cut away the waste material and I want to cut that down to the bar. Alright, when I need to make a bunch of wedges, whether I'm making clamps or just, you know, using them for whatever in the shop, uh, I start, usually you make my wedges four and a half inches long, and this is a piece of three quarter inch stock. Uh, what I want to do is I want to put a, a what, just a piece behind here, and I want to make sure it's supporting on the left side of the, or on the left side of the blade, so when that blade cuts through here, it's not going to want to squeeze that or push that into the blade. That could cause problems. So what I'm going to do is just, Line that up so it's just going to cut a little bit onto the this side of the blade and then that's going to sit at an angle and I'm going to keep obviously keep my hands far away from the blade but I and I did just by adding another piece of stock the same thickness and passing a bar or another piece between them and I'll use that with lots of down pressure to hold it in place. Now once that's done I'll just go ahead and rip that off. I'll cut, cut my next one off and then I can use this wedge right here that I started with as a guide. I'll put that up uh, on the back on the back fence of my uh, slide here, slide, fence, slide table, let me get it right, and then I'm going to cut the next section off. Now this is the tricky part, you want to make sure that you leave some meat here on the back. You don't want to run that out on the blade otherwise that will slide in and pinch between here and your blade. Probably won't do anything, but it could be really frightening when everything starts pinching. So, I'm going to make sure I leave enough meat right there. Again, I want to use my bar or my uh, auxiliary piece here to hold everything into place, and I'll start cutting. But first, let me cut this other side off here. I hope you found today's tips useful. You know, you can throw a little finish on those and some paste wax. The glue won't stick to it if you use paste wax, or you can put a little tape over wherever the glue joints are going to be. They are handy to have around. They're ridiculously cheap to build, and they're fast build, so they do come in handy. Tomorrow, um, we're going to use wedges, but for a different purpose. You ever been putting cabinets together and you had to put two pieces in a corner like that and needed to hold them while you put some fasteners in place or let the glue dry? Could be a real pain in the butt. Well, tomorrow I'm going to show you how you can use wedges to do that very thing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and don't forget to subscribe. Tons of fun stuff coming up.